ever pondered what message the Apostle Paul intended to send to the Thessalonians in his second letter? Allow me to set the scene for you. Imagine a bustling city in ancient Greece, its streets filled with merchants, philosophers, and a growing community of new Christians. This is Thessalonica, a city at the crossroads of East and West, where the Apostle Paul wrote his second letter to the Thessalonians. This book, known as Two Thessalonians, is one of the earliest written texts in the New Testament and holds a special place in the annals of Christian literature. Penned by Paul, a man whose life was dramatically transformed on the road to Damascus, this epistle was intended for the young and thriving Christian community of Thessalonica, who were learning to navigate their faith in a complex and often hostile world. The time of its writing is believed to be around the first century, shortly after the first letter to the Thessalonians. But unlike the first letter which was filled with praise for the Thessalonians' faith, this second letter carried a different tone, one of correction and encouragement. The book of 2 Thessalonians covers several profound themes. It speaks of perseverance in the face of persecution, of the end times and the coming of the man of lawlessness. It also outlines the importance of leading a disciplined life, not being idle, but working hard and contributing to the community. But perhaps its most significant message is one of hope. Hope that despite the trials and tribulations they were facing, they could rest assured in the promise of the Lord's return. It's a message that resonates even today, offering comfort and reassurance in times of uncertainty. So as we step back in time, we're not just exploring an ancient text, we're unraveling a timeless message, as relevant today as it was 2,000 years ago. Now, journey with us as we delve into each chapter, unveiling the profound messages contained within Scene Script. Chapter 1 commences with Paul commending the Thessalonians for their faith amid persecution. We find ourselves diving into the heart of the first chapter, where the Apostle Paul lauds the Thessalonians for their unwavering faith and endurance. Despite the trials and tribulations they faced, their faith didn't falter, but rather, it flourished. Imagine that. Their belief stood firm, like an unyielding tree standing tall against a tempestuous storm. Paul's words are not merely empty praise. He acknowledges the Thessalonians' steadfastness as a demonstration of their faith and love. He recognizes their perseverance, their ability to endure and keep the faith even when the going gets tough. This is a testament to their spiritual fortitude, a testament to their unwavering belief in God's promise. But Paul doesn't stop there. He offers reassurance, a soothing balm for their troubled hearts. He speaks of God's justice, the divine balance that ensures that every action, every deed, is met with an equal and opposite reaction. This is a concept that resonates deeply within our own understanding of the world. Paul assures the Thessalonians that those who trouble them will be troubled in return. A comforting thought indeed for those who bear the brunt of persecution. In the same breath, however, Paul also promises relief for the faithful. He assures them that God's justice is not merely punitive, but also rewarding. For those who remain steadfast in their faith, who endure persecution without wavering, relief is promised. A time of rest, of peace, a respite from their troubles is assured. This isn't just an empty promise, but a divine guarantee. A beacon of hope for the weary and the oppressed. And so, Paul's words become a source of encouragement, a beacon of hope in the midst of adversity. His message is clear. Stay strong, keep the faith, endure. For in the end, God's justice will prevail and those who remain faithful will find relief. Thus, the initial chapter sets a tone of encouragement and hope, even in the face of adversity. Chapter two takes a drastic turn, introducing us to the ominous figure of the man of lawlessness. This figure, shrouded in mystery, is a central character in Paul's prophecy about the end times. Let's delve into this prophecy. Paul paints a vivid picture of a man who exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped. This man of lawlessness, as he is ominously called, is believed to set himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. This audacious act of defiance against the divine is said to precede the return of Christ marking a key event in the biblical timeline of the end times. But who is this man of lawlessness? Various interpretations have been proposed over the centuries. Some see him as a symbolic representation of all that is evil. 
while others believe he is a specific individual who will rise to power in the end times. Despite the differing views, one thing is clear. The man of lawlessness embodies opposition to God and his divine order. Yet, Paul's message in the second chapter of Thessalonians isn't one of doom and gloom. Amid this prophecy of lawlessness and rebellion, he urges the Thessalonians to stand firm in their faith. He calls them to remember the teachings they have received and to hold fast to them. This call to steadfast faith is not just for the Thessalonians of the first century, but echoes down to all believers, even in our time. Why? Because faith, Paul suggests, is the shield that protects us in times of spiritual warfare. It's the anchor that keeps us grounded when the world around us seems to be crumbling. The prophecy of the man of lawlessness, then, isn't meant to instill fear, but to strengthen resolve and to inspire unwavering faith. This chapter, while foreboding, serves as a reminder of the importance of steadfast faith. So in the face of uncertainty and the unknown, let's take Paul's words to heart and stand firm in our faith, no matter what comes our way. In the final chapter, Paul shifts focus, emphasizing the importance of personal responsibility and discipline. As we delve deeper into the text, we see that Paul's message is not only spiritual, but also profoundly practical. He advocates for a life that is quiet, yet productive, a life that is not ostentatious, but filled with dignity and purpose. He encourages the Thessalonians to lead lives that are not just about waiting for the return of Christ, but about making the most of the time they have now. Paul's words resonate with a timeless wisdom. He says, aspire to live quietly, to mind your own affairs, and to work with your hands. It's a call to focus on our own actions and responsibilities, instead of getting caught up in the whirlwind of others' lives. It's a call to work diligently, to make a difference in our own small ways, to contribute to the society we live in. Yet Paul does not stop at just encouraging productivity. He also addresses the issue of idleness, admonishing those who choose not to work. He warns against the perils of becoming a burden to others. He urges the Thessalonians to demonstrate their faith through their actions, to set an example through their conduct. Paul's instructions are not meant to be harsh or judgmental, but to foster a sense of community where everyone contributes, where everyone has a role to play. He reminds the Thessalonians that their faith is not a ticket to complacency, but a call to action, a call to responsibility. And this message, my friends, is as relevant today as it was 2,000 years ago. Whether we are waiting for the return of Christ or simply striving to live a meaningful life, we are called to be active contributors, not passive observers. We are called to live quietly, mind our own affairs, and work with our hands. Concluding his second letter, Paul leaves the Thessalonians with practical advice for living out their faith, and in doing so, he leaves us with a roadmap for leading a life that is not just fulfilling, but also responsible and impactful. As we reflect on the book of 2 Thessalonians, several key themes emerge. At the heart of this epistle, we find a tale of enduring faith in the face of persecution. The Thessalonians, despite the trials they faced, never wavered in their commitment to the teachings of the gospel. Their perseverance is a testament to the strength of belief and the power of faith. This enduring faith is a beacon of hope in a world often filled with uncertainty and despair. Next, we dive into the prophecy of the man of lawlessness and the end times. It's a glimpse into the future, a warning of the chaos that awaits before the second coming of Christ. This prophecy might seem ominous, but it also serves as a reminder of the importance of vigilance and readiness. The future might be fraught with challenges, but believers are encouraged to remain steadfast, to keep their faith unshaken in the face of adversity. Finally, we encounter a call to personal responsibility and discipline. The Thessalonians are reminded to lead orderly lives, to work diligently and not to become idle. It's a theme that resonates even today as we navigate our own lives. It's a reminder that faith is not just about belief, but also about action. It's about how we live our lives, how we treat others, and how we contribute to the world around us. These themes, woven together, create a tapestry of guidance for followers of the faith. They remind us to stand firm in our beliefs, to be vigilant in the face of future challenges, 
and to lead lives of responsibility and discipline. So we see that the book of 2 Thessalonians is not just a historical document. It's a living guide filled with wisdom that remains relevant today. It's a source of comfort, a beacon of hope, and a call to action. In the end, 2 Thessalonians serves as a beacon, guiding believers through adversity and uncertainty towards a life of faith and diligence.